Why did NASA and SpaceX abandon new spacecraft Dragon XL for the Artemis lunar mission? The Dragon XL was projected to be the go-to spacecraft for the Artemis lunar mission. However, the spacecraft did not meet the expectations that came with its name, as due to unforeseen circumstances, it was ultimately abandoned for the mission. Today we'll be talking about why NASA and SpaceX abandoned the new spacecraft Dragon XL for the Artemis lunar mission. What was wrong with the spacecraft that led it to being abandoned? What spacecraft was it replaced with? Well, stick to the end as we answer these questions and more as we delve into the world of SpaceX and the rest of the space industry. Without further ado, let us begin. Before we talk about the Dragon XL, let us first talk about the Artemis lunar mission and what it's all about. Let me go through all the events preceding this abandonment to make our viewers better equipped to understand the crux of the topic at hand. NASA stated in March 2020 that SpaceX had been chosen to deliver the majority of pressurized and unpressurized cargo, experiments, and other supplies to the Gateway, which will be erected in an elliptical or egg-shaped orbit around the Moon. For the first few years of operation, that would be required to personnel a planned Gateway lunar space mission. SpaceX will play a key part in NASA's Artemis mission, which aims to land astronauts on the Moon. SpaceX would create a highly modified single-use version of its Dragon 2 spacecraft with increased propellant storage, cargo capacity, and a variety of other design adjustments to accomplish that goal. This enormous transport truck, despite its name, seems more like a large Cygnus XL vehicle than a conventional Dragon design. At liftoff, the Dragon XL would weigh roughly 15 to 16 tons, implying that each mission to the moon would necessitate a fully or partially expendable Falcon Heavy launch. According to NASA, sample collecting materials, spacesuits and other items humans may need on the Gateway and on the moons, the surface could be delivered by SpaceX's Dragon XL missions. Using docking and navigation technology that flies aboard the Dragon 2 crew and cargo vehicles, the Dragon XL will dock autonomously with the Gateway station. The resupply spacecraft will stay at the Gateway for 6 to 12 months, allowing research packages inside and outside the cargo ship to be controlled remotely even while crews are not present. Returning to the moon and enabling future space travel necessitates the delivery of large amounts of cargo at a low cost, according to Gwen Shotwell, president and CEO of SpaceX. In a statement, she says, Through our partnership with NASA, SpaceX has been delivering scientific research and critical supplies to the International Space Station since 2012, and we are honored to continue the work beyond Earth orbit and carry Artemis cargo to Gateway. This is an exciting new chapter for human exploration," added Mark Weiss, Deep Space Logistics Manager at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. We are bringing the innovative thinking of the commercial industry into our supply chain and helping ensure we're able to support crews preparing for lunar surface expeditions by delivering the supplies they need ahead of time. NASA made a reasonably balanced and logical decision at the time, leveraging existing investments and knowledge with SpaceX and Dragon while avoiding huge technical challenges. However, more than two years later, NASA and SpaceX have yet to begin work on the contract, which is why the current NASA request for information issued on April 1st is so intriguing. The agency can continue receiving and considering new proposals from new current suppliers throughout the program's planned 17-year lifespan, according to small text in the original 2018 Gateway Logistics Services or GLS Request for Proposal RFP. So, how do you think the video is going? Another obstacle awaits. What can we learn from the rest of this document? What does NASA say regarding the subject at hand? Before we answer these questions, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so you could keep on receiving similar content. NASA doesn't say what that implies, but based on the remainder of the document, it appears the agency wants to use this RFI to help them decide whether or not to on-ramp their existing Dragon XL contract with SpaceX. However, the document becomes significantly more intriguing and revealing as it progresses. Later on, NASA clarifies what it wants responders to talk about in a list of eight primary topics, implying a willingness to significantly expand the area of GLS. In question number eight, NASA asks if responses would be able to deliver extra goods to cislunar orbits and the lunar surface, or offer a dedicated delivery tug capability or rapid response delivery service to assist development of a robust supply chain in deep space. NASA appears to be particularly interested in the potential benefits of cheaper and more competent deep space cargo transport services than Dragon XL. 
The RFI, however, reads as if it were sent straight to SpaceX between the lines. Perhaps the most telling question is the first. Is your firm interested in joining the GLS contract to supply logistic services as outlined in the original solicitation? SpaceX is the only firm that currently has a GLS contract with which it could on-ramp. A euphemism for start working on, NASA then indicated an interest in cargo transport capability much beyond the initial contract criteria in the following questions and inquired about innovative new capabilities that could enable such enhancements. NASA even acknowledges and hints at a willingness to pursue unconventional solutions, such as requiring more than one launch per cargo delivery or assisting the government in reducing initial costs. Simply put, while it does allow any U.S. business to notify NASA about a new GLS option, it's difficult not to conclude that this new RFI is at least partially designed to allow SpaceX to submit Dragon XL alternatives or enhancements, as well as the most apparent possibility, Starship. NASA has already committed to investing at least $3 billion in the Human Landing System HLS program to develop a rudimentary Starship moon lander, as well as the fully reusable launch vehicle and refueling infrastructure required to launch and operate it. The Starship architecture that SpaceX and NASA are currently creating could be used to convey dozens of tons of pressurized cargo to cislunar space, lunar orbit, the gateway, the lunar surface, or just about anywhere else NASA desires with very little alteration. By dramatically decreasing upfront and overall development costs, helping to foster a robust deep space supply chain, and outperforming Dragon's cargo capabilities by a factor of 5, 10, or even 20, leveraging that significant investment would also tick practically every box in NASA's new RFI. Of course, there are technical obstacles to overcome, as well as grounds to assume the Starship will not be able to readily replace Dragon XL. Even the Dragon XL is at risk of colliding with gateways that have a 14-ton vehicle mass limit. The spacecraft would be at least 100 to 200 tons in weight, greater than the gateway itself. Dragon XL would use non-chirogenic propellant and is baseline to stay at the gateway for at least 6 to 12 months at a time. NASA has also looked into the concept of employing Dragon XL as a crew cabin or bathroom to relieve the extremely limited livable capacity in gateways. The chirogenic propellant used in Starship main engines wants nothing more than to warm up and boil into gas, making it difficult to stay at the station for months at a time. Although these issues are likely to be resolved, it's worth noting that Starship isn't a perfect match right out of the box. The RFI might potentially conclude in a whimper if SpaceX simply informs NASA that it's satisfied to move forward with the proposed Dragon XLS. Only time will tell how the cards fall in the end. One thing's for sure, whatever spacecraft is used in the mission, SpaceX will surely make the right decision. Considering the major breakthroughs they've had in recent years, they are well equipped to make a decision regarding the spacecraft used. While we leave the decision to SpaceX, what do you think? What spacecraft should be used? Do let us know in the comments below. And that's pretty much it for today's episode. Please share your thoughts in the comment box. Your encouragement motivates us to create more high quality content. Do leave a like and hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. Thank you and we'll see you again soon.